So today's class is going to be on some American inspiration. Hey class, Mr. G here. Welcome back. Uh, new year, new year, another new video. So today we're going to be talking about art history for a little bit uh, and also how it influences some of the products that we're doing. One project that I do a lot with my students, that first intro intro ceramics class lesson that we do is pinch pots, pin, basic pinch pots design. But how can we take that pinch pot design and revamp it to give it something new, something new life? Uh, today's artist that we're going to be checking out, Mary O'Malley. Uh, to get some ideas and some inspiration for our for those projects. Okay, so today's standards that we're gonna be covering is you're gonna have those basic ones, which are you're keeping a sketchbook and a record of what you're creating and how you're creating. The process itself, pinch, coil, and maybe a little bit of slab, depending on what you got your setup as. And then finally, we have our history. Now, our history, this is how does previous cultures or cultures outside of our own influence the cultures that of the pieces that we're trying to create. Uh, for the pieces that we're going to be working with today, we're, again, we're working with an American-based artist. So, you know, in the States here. However, the artwork of Mary O'Malley has oceanic influences. Now we're using those oceanic elements to bring in to the designs that we're working today. So cross-cultural elements, uh, you got a little bit of steam activity there. So we're dealing with some science and uh, engineering elements so that how do we get our pieces to work together? How is those bar how are those barnacles gonna be attaching to our cups? Those are those little elements today that we're gonna be discussing. So basic pinch cup design is gonna be one of those great simplistic projects to start off with, but giving it a little bit of flair by adding some under the sea um, elements to it, adding some under the sea elements to it, gives it a much better uh, creative endeavor for your students to work on. It's just much more interesting when you guys have something that you can attach, add, build, construct onto those vessels, and sometimes you just need that, that theme to work off of. Now, one of those big things for me when I'm doing art history, when I'm talking to my students is I don't want to do just dead people. Um, it, it gets boring and, and repetitive really quickly. So today's artist that we're going to be deep diving into is Mary O'Malley. She is a living working artist. Uh, she's actually working on her grad program. Last uh, thing that I read. So a young artist who's still who's still in school doing her stuff, but it's good inspirational work that your students will probably enjoy. Now, before we get too far in this, uh, my notes today are coming from Ceramic Monthly, as well as a talk with Mary O'Malley for the National Endowment for the Arts. So if you need to know where I'm referencing my material from. Now, Mary O'Malley is an American born artist. She was born in Pennsylvania, so up north. Uh, her work is primarily, um, your first her work is postmodern surrealism. Her functional wear has roots, not only surrealistic poetry, displacements that convert one kind of reality into another, but also the work of 16th century potter Bernard Palissy. Palesley. Pal Pal Palissy? Palissy. Yeah, that works. Now, this, the series that I focused on with my students was the Bottom Feeder series. I thought this was a great jumping off point for simple texture design that we could add to our cup designs, but it, prog but it provides a lot of different uh, textures that you can do very simply. Now, her Bottom Feeder series is the consequence of hard look at a number of issues, the romancing of nature, the representations of nature as it turns into something kitsch, uh, the presence of e ecological crisis. Mally takes the consideration of cultural boundary boundaries between craft, fine art, and kitsch, aiming to confuse functionality with straight aesthetics and cultural cult commentary. Craft is extremely important to her, and while she knows it's unlikely that anyone will actually put tea in one of her teapots, it's important that her her pots pour well, uh, the handle, the spout, lid is well designed and conceptually integrated. I'm also a functioning potter. I think that all the work that I work on, all the wares that I make, there should be some sort of functionality to it, that there should be some sort of usage out of the pieces. Now this is not in every, now this is not for everybody. Some people think that their pottery, their uh, sculptures that they make are strictly for ornamentation, just as a decorative piece. Some work on both sides of the fence. Me, I kind of stick more to functionality. So even if it is doesn't look, if it looks defunct and it's not supposed to work, it actually does work. I think that's a that, but that's a me thing. That's one of my things that I I instill in my own work, and I show to my students, and I tell them that this could work still. It doesn't have to work, and it, sometimes it's not supposed to work, but it still can work. So that's a thing that I like to talk about. 
Now the bottom feeder series combines numerous sources of imagery, classical proportion, traditional tableware, seashore debris, uh, debris, seashore debris, and a variety of different specimens and sea creatures. Combine these elements form an elegant, elegant and allegram that resembles nothing less than a refined form of sea salvage. In their mannered and highly complex detailing, they call to mind objects that can be found in the long submerged wreckage of a luxury ocean liner. Her teapots, her cups, and other standard pieces of high-end china service are encrusted with ceramic barnacles and various other species of slimy or clingy sea life. The bellies, the rims, the handles of her vessels are, are often clutched by, clung to, or comprised of bodies of octopus, sea crab, and starfish. Satiny white surfaces of the wear stand in sharp contrast to the spiky trump, trump le, le, I should go ask my foreign language teachers for some help on this. Uh, densely packed sea wreckage adhered to it. The porcelain looks as if it were being devoured by sea life. Each piece seems to be the starting point of a reef. Objects that might become embedded into the coral and other forms of rigid and colonizing sea life. Now, this work is built around a series of oppositions, the most basic of which is that between artifice of social order and forces of nature, her work replicates the tableware of a special occasion. It's kind of upscale department store porcelain um, that you'd usually give to like a wedding party or something. Uh, each porcelain cup, pitcher, teapot, terrine have the gleam of objects uh, save for just those perfect special occasions. Again, the wedding party, uh, something high end. Each of these with its conventional mark of quality, the gold covered rim, the, the banality of the tableware, um, its omnipresence of tepid attractiveness, it's confronted by the intimidation of nature, a symbol of force beyond control, its humorous surrealistic confirmation, the objects obscured obscuring the wear might under different circumstances be seated on top of them on uh, on top of it as a meal so again i'm looking at these pieces and i'm and i'm trying to express to my students that these you're taking the traditional design of a traditional cup so when you're working in your sketchbooks draw basic shape structures here uh cups teapots saucers some sort of uh wear that'll hold something like a, a plate for food, a teacup for drink, uh, so a small pitcher, anything that you would normally see in one of these table surfaces. Why? Because it's something that is inundated in us uh, from a very early age. We know exactly what these things are, a cup, a plate, a saucer. They're common elements, but how do we take that and how do we change it or how do we make it more elevate that art form? So using her as that jumping off point, my students then are taking those designs, putting them down in your sketchbook. So draw a couple of those basic sketches and then add sea creature elements onto the top of it. Does it have to be sea creatures? No. I like using her stuff because it references uh, several elements that we're trying to do in pinch design where you're trying to create those little barnacles and you're trying to pinch the clay nice and thin so you can create those little barnacle shells. If you're doing this as a carryover into coil design, you're rolling out small coils to make the tentacles for your octopus, octopi, octopi, yeah. And these these small um, sculptural elements that you're building off of, that you're getting to be, that you're adapting how clay works onto your cups, onto your designs, and that's going to give you a lot more skill set as you move further down in the class. Uh, now this is again. I do this as an intro to ceramics class, and this is one of those first projects that we do where we're building pinch pot cups, and they're adding sculptural elements on top of it. If you just want to do sculpture, sculptural elements further down the road, by all means, use the video where you need fit. This was one of my students um, last term, and he made the tray plate pinch pot design, pinch design, and added the barnacles around the edges, so you have this nice uh, pinched clay that was just kind of like a seashell pinch i told him to take the clay and form it around the tips of his fingers and then add that to the clay to the edge of the plate so if you're making the barnacle you take a piece of clay push it around your fingertip and then put a little slip on the back press it down into the fresh clay of the saucer and the two should stick fine uh, i do always recommend that you take a tool afterwards and kind of go around the base of where those two pieces touch and that's just going to further adhere the pieces together uh, then coming up with uh, these fine tentacle pieces for the handle, nice sculptural structures to them, good stuff. I love I love seeing this kind of stuff. The uh, the one thing you do need to be aware of is if you're making these little barnacle pieces that are going to come off of the edge, off of the 
uh, surface here. These are fragile and you need to be very careful of them when you're handling the wear so that you don't accidentally chip or break these things. Um, so there's one of those things that we learned uh, during the process, during the build process that you just don't think about uh, until something happens. So working with those things carefully, daintily pieces and uh, everything should come out just fine. Now using her work as, as that reference point, the artist didn't just create a cup and just leave it at that. She took a cup and she added elements onto it to create a personal voice, to create a personal resonance in her pieces. Uh, reading through the rest of her stuff, a lot of things that she wanted to bring awareness to, she wanted to bring awareness to the environment, how the environment needs to be protected, but also how the environment will outlive all of us. So if you left something like this, in the in the sea you would have barnacles and things would eventually start growing over the top of it uh, if you ever see pictures of coral reef this thing has happened time and time again uh nature envelops life that we that we left behind or things that we left behind nature will envelop it in course i think it's a really good thing to, for to bring into a classroom discussion is how can your pieces that you make affect or infect the the area around it, the, the livestock, um, life around it, landscape, how does this stuff compare to some of the stuff that you, uh, how does this work in everyday life? What is going to be left behind when you are not here anymore? So using that just as a little bit of a thing that you can put into the sketchbook, a nice writing element there, a good, good way to get that little bit of uh, structure and in, in design added to your piece and it's just good stuff. Another awesome class today, guys. I hope that you guys got something excellent out of today's class. As always, uh, let's don't forget to take care of our homework for us, which is don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all of these platforms, try and get the message out there to all the other students. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, don't forget to raise your hand down in the comments below. Happy to get back to you guys and help you out any way that I can. Other than that, I will see you guys as always next class. Until then, later guys.